This is no ordinary sheet of plywood. This is plywood cut by a bandsaw. Hello, and this is Mr. Sorensen. Uh, today, we're gonna look at identifying some parts on a machine. One of the really cool aspects of woodworking is that the more you know about a machine, the more you come to know what just what it can do. And these big machines have lots and lots and lots and lots of potential if you know how they work. But you gotta know all the pieces and what the pieces can do, and then uh, really the sky's the limit in terms of the kinds of things that you wanna do when it comes to building a project. How do I cut something? Well, if I know how to tilt all the tables and make all the pieces work, I can cut a lot of really intricate parts and pieces in ways that I may not know how to do if I simply know that this is a bandsaw and that's about it. All right, so the first thing I wanna remind you of when you are working on a bandsaw here at Royal is that on the front of the bandsaw over the lower door, there is a tool panel. And a lot of the tools that you would need to help you with the process of working on the bandsaw can be found there. The first one I wanna highlight is this right here. This is a miter gauge. So the bandsaw has this slot in the table. This slot in the table is called a miter slot. And that's gonna receive this bar on the miter gauge. Bar, miter gauge sits in the slot like that, and that miter gauge is pretty much stuck to the table now. How is that gonna help me? Well, if I'm working with a round piece of stock, the round piece of stock wants to spin when the blade hits it, and that round piece of stock can launch off of the table. If I hold the round piece of stock up against this miter gauge, the miter gauge is stuck on the table. The round piece of stock can no longer fly off the tabletop. So that's one place I might use a miter gauge. The second way I would use a miter gauge is the miter gauge has a protractor on it. And if I loosen up the handle, I can tilt the protractor to uh, any of the numbers on here. So let's say I needed a piece of wood cut at a 25 degree angle. I can just set this at 25 degrees and tighten it back up. And now when I make my cut, on the bandsaw, it's cutting 25 degrees, and I'm confident of that. So this is a, a, a really handy tool to have at a bandsaw, and that's called a miter gauge. Many of the tools that we work with will use that. Another tool that I can find on the miter gauge is this right here. Now, this is sort of an official-looking bandsaw. A push stick it's painted red and it even has push stick labeled on it so generally there'll be a push stick on one of the tool panels and you're certainly welcome to use that uh, when you're cutting on the bandsaw another thing I want to point out with to you is that on a bandsaw pretty much any piece of wood any scrap piece you can get it like I just did out of the trash can any piece of wood could be used as a push device or a push stick on a bandsaw. All we want to do is make sure that we have some piece of wood that's going to allow us to push our piece of wood through the bandsaw blade. And then the last thing that touches the bandsaw blade is the scrap piece of wood, not our finger. Uh, so keep that in mind. On a bandsaw, you can use an official push stick, which would hang on the tool panel, or you can just use a scrap piece of wood, which you could get from the trash can or anywhere else that you can find it. Another tool that you would find on the tool panel is this thing right here. This is called a V block. You notice that cut down the middle of the piece of wood is a V. This again is used for cutting irregular shapes, primarily cylindrical shaped pieces of wood, round pieces of wood. The round piece of wood sits in the V the, and it's gonna keep the round piece of wood from spinning. So here's an example of a round piece of wood, right? So I have about a one inch uh, diameter dowel. If I try to cut that on the bandsaw, the bandsaw hits that round piece of wood, it wants to spin and one of the options is it could spin and throw it out of my hand. Throwing it out of my hand could pull my hand into the blade and so anytime I cut round stock 
a better solution than to cut it on the table is to stick it in the V block and it would sit like that. That's going to make it harder for the uh, round stock to spin. It has more friction. And then I would use that whole setup and put it on the table and make my cut to my round stock. When I use a V block to cut round stock, the one thing that I have to do is I have to make sure I raise the guide high enough that the V block and the piece of wood will slide underneath it. So it does make things a little more dangerous because I'm having to move the guide and the guard up higher to allow the V block and the piece of wood to fit under it. But uh, it still is a safe way and maybe a better way to do cutting, especially when you are using cylindrical or round stock. Uh, on a bandsaw, you have an upper wheel guard and down here is a lower wheel guard. So this door, this door down here, this is the upper wheel guard, down here is the lower wheel guard. The wheel guards are used, as the name sounds, uh, or the, as the name states, to guard the, the wheels. So it's going to keep my hands out of these moving parts as the blade is spinning. The upper wheel guard and the lower wheel guard are connected by this arm. This is called the arm. The arm has on it generally the on and off switch, which are right here. Our on and off switch has a safety mechanism, which is this red button. The red button turns the machine off, but the red button also is critical in allowing you to turn the machine back on. The machine at this point cannot be turned on. If I push the on switch, nothing will happen. I have to pull the red button back out. This is a safety mechanism that keeps the bandsaw from accidentally being turned on. So if you try to turn it on and it won't go on, the first thing to try is pull on the red button. I noticed that it just popped back out. So now when I push the green button, the bandsaw should turn on. All right. Part of the structure of the bandsaw, the next thing would be this right here. This is the, the, uh, the guide. The guide sits down here at the end of this long arm. The guide is going to hold on to the bandsaw blade. It keeps the bandsaw blade from flexing left and right. The guide has ball bearings in it. It keeps the bandsaw blade from being able to push backwards and fall off of the, the bandsaw. And sometimes the bandsaw guide, the bandsaw guide has a guard on it. So in the case of this bandsaw, the, the guide down here has a guard on it. Up here, this part is a guard, right? This is guarding the bandsaw blade and it's keeping my fingers from being able to uh, grab the blade when I reach up here to adjust the guide. So this is a guide this right here is a guard, blade guard. Now, the blade guide and the blade guard are used specifically to cover up the blade. So a bandsaw obviously is gonna have a blade. Uh, the blades come in various sizes uh, and that will depend on what you're trying to cut through. If you're, if you're having to do big heavy cuts, let's say you had a big log that you wanted to resaw into actual usable pieces, you're going to need a big heavy duty blade. If you have a little 1 8 inch sheet of plywood and you need to cut out a very detailed pattern on it, you probably want to go with a very small 1 8 inch uh, wide bandsaw blade. So bandsaw blades vary. You have to choose them based on what it is you're trying to cut out. So this is the bandsaw blade. This piece right here is the table. The table. The table is what I'm going to set my work on to do all of my cutting. Now in the center of the table around the blade is this little piece right here. Right? This little piece is called a throat plate. 
Throat plates are on many of the machines we use in the shop. They come in lots of various shapes and sizes. This is a square shape and it's made out of hard plastic. The throat plate is going to cover up this hole around the bandsaw blade. Holes are needed on the machine tables to allow us to come in here and install blades. But we need to cover up that hole when we're done so that my um, the piece of wood that I'm cutting can't go down in the hole. That becomes very dangerous. I don't want my hands going in there. I don't want pieces of wood going down in there. And I don't want sawdust and debris, scraps, from going down there because they'll get stuck in the little ball bearings and then it will cause problems, potentially causing the blade to fall off. So I need to close up that hole. That's done with the throw plate. All right, so now we're in the back of the bandsaw and I'm gonna bring you down here and I'm gonna show you another piece of the bandsaw. We are looking at the table and right here in the back of the table on this big Laguna bandsaw is something called the trunnion. The trunnion, there's actually two metal pieces. They're shaped like a, kind of like a half moon. Uh, the trunnion is what attaches the bandsaw table to the uh, the actual bandsaw machine, the frame of the bandsaw. And it is also what allows the bandsaw table to pivot. And you can tilt the bandsaw table to about 45 degrees. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here so you can better see the half moon shape of the trunnion. So there's the trunnion. And in fact, on a lot of the trunnions, right, you can see it looks kind of like a protractor. Most trunnions will have a protractor on it. It also has a uh, it also has a, a locking mechanism that allows us to lock the table flat or at any degree that we need it to make our cut. Here is another important feature on the more expensive bandsaws and I, it's a feature I recommend. Right there on the side of the bandsaw is a brake. Generally it's going to be uh, to the right side of the bandsaw and uh, it will extend much like you see right there out of the, the case. In the case of our bandsaw here, this Laguna, stepping on it also turns the machine off. So it, it, it kills the electricity to the machine and brings the blade to a quick stop. On other bandsaws, pushing on the brake is only going to bring the blade to a stop. If you leave the bandsaw running and you don't hit the off switch, then the blade, as soon as you take your foot off, the bandsaw will just simply speed back up and continue to turn. So you want to be careful that you know how your bandsaw works. Another component that is often used on a bandsaw is a resaw fence. So this bandsaw has a resaw fence on it. Resaw fences tend to be tall. Resaw fences are used to cut a board in half the tall direction, which is why resaw fences tend to be so high or tall. So using a resaw fence would look like that. I would set up my fence, lock it into place, and then I'm going to resaw this board into two separate boards the exact same dimension, just a little thinner. In rare occasions, I would use a resaw fence. Otherwise, I tend to use the bandsaw freehand and use no fence. Um, one other uh, elective part or optional part that might, you might find on the, the tool panel is this thing right here called a feather board. And a feather board fits in most machines where it can be used. It fits in the miter gauge slot. And a feather board really acts as a third hand. So for the feather board, I'm gonna set my piece of wood on the table. And then I'm going to take the feather board and push it tight up against the block of wood. And then while holding it really tight, I'm going to tighten the feather board into the miter slot on the table. And now that feather board keeps the board pushed tight to the fence. That gives me, uh, it frees up my hands to be working on uh, pushing the board through and maybe holding it on the top. So now I have three points of contact on the board, helping keep the board 
upright and moving it through the blade instead of just two. So a feather board uh, is a optional piece of equipment that can be very helpful for use on bandsaws. Obviously you have a better view now of here's the miter slot. Some bandsaws have two miter slots. This particular bandsaw has one. Most bandsaws will have at least one miter slot so that you can use a miter gauge if you're making specialty cuts. Let's move around to the front of the bandsaw. Here's another little interesting piece on a bandsaw. This slot, right, notice that the, the table surface is, has a cut in it. And that's called the blade slot. The blade slot would allow you to slide the, the new blade in. Once a blade breaks, you throw that blade away. We need to slide a new blade on. We have, to, we have to have a slot there to slide the new blade in to install it on the bandsaw. Now we've got a dilemma and that is because the blade has that, the, the table has that cut in it, the two halves of the table could potentially be at different heights and it would make it very difficult to use and cut and have any kind of accuracy. So most bandsaws will have something like this, this little pin fits in that blade slot and it keeps the two halves of the table aligned. So this is an alignment pin, right? This is this would be called a table alignment pin. Okay, so all bandsaws are gonna have some control and adjustment features that allow the, the operator or the, the uh, lab technician to keep the bandsaw in top-notch condition. You see in the back here a number of those control knobs. This right here is the guide post locking handle and this is the guide post adjustment handle. Guide post locking handle or, and or guide post adjustment handle. Um, on your worksheet you only have one knob. That's because our old bandsaw only had one knob it had the guide post locking handle. This guide post, I can unlock it, but the guide post doesn't do anything. It stays there to adjust the guide post, which is this arm right here. This allows me to cut bigger or smaller pieces and safely have the guard and the guide in place. I have to use the guide post um, adjusting handle. So turning the guide post adjusting handle in one direction raises the guide and turning it in the other direction lowers the guide. In general, when I'm done cutting and I'm finished with the machine, I'm going to adjust the guide and the guard all the way down and rest it on the table. That way, if for any reason somebody falls into the bandsaw, their hand cannot hit the blade. All right, there's another important um, adjustment feature on a bandsaw and that's this one in the center right here. Uh, you'll find it somewhere in this area of a bandsaw, the upper, um, by the upper wheel, and generally either in the middle or somewhere near that. And this is the tracking uh, adjustment, blade tracking adjustment. So by turning this handle, the wheel is gonna tilt either back or forward, and it's gonna make the blade move forward or back. And generally on a bandsaw, the blade should track or run right in the center of the wheels. All right, the third and final adjustment feature here, and that is this handle here. Now in, in bandsaws, a lot of bandsaws, you're gonna see it in one of two places. Because of the height of this bandsaw, they've put it underneath the upper wheel. In shorter bandsaws, smaller bandsaws, this hand wheel is generally up on top of the bandsaw. And this is the blade tension adjustment hand wheel. Blade tension adjustment hand wheel. This is what puts tension on a, on a bandsaw blade. Bandsaw blades fit over the top of two wheels and then you have to pull it really tight so that it's, it's uh, got a lot of tension on it. That's what's going to allow it to cut very straight and the blade doesn't flex back and forth and ultimately it would break or fall off it would, if it was too loose. So this hand wheel right here is going to put tension 
on the blade. Now, in our particular bandsaw, we need to know how much tension we put on the blade. So, in, in some bandsaws, there'll be an indicator. On our bandsaw, here is the indicator that's trying to help you know how much tension do you put on your bandsaw. So, there's a chart here. It shows me what is the size of your blade. And if I have a three quarter inch blade, then I want the tension level on my bandsaw blade to be at a 20. And in this little window right here, it shows me a number. It shows me right now the number 10. So as I adjust this hand wheel, that number changes. And for, we have a 3 8 inch blade, a 3 8 inch blade should be at number 10. So I turn my hand wheel until I see a number 10 there that tells me that I'm, I should be at the right tension for my blade. All right, I'm going to show you one other um, feature associated with the blade tension uh, hand wheel. But to do that, I'm going to need to take you over to the smaller bandsaw. Now, like I said, on small bandsaws, the blade tensioning hand wheel is on the top of the bandsaw. So on our small bandsaw, here it is. This does the same thing that we just saw underneath the big bandsaw. However, this bandsaw, the little bandsaw, has an additional feature that's related to that. And that is this quick release. One of the challenging parts of putting a blade in and getting it all back to good condition is making sure you have the tension set right. So on bandsaws that have this quick release, you never have to adjust the tension. If the blade breaks, you're simply going to release the quick release lever. You're going to take the blade off, put the new blade on, and push it directly back to where it was before, right? You just push the lever back, and you've, you're back to the same exact tension. Thus, the process of changing the blade becomes very fast. Well, let me take a couple seconds and walk you through a real life cut so you can see how we take all of this information we've learned about and put it all together. And I'm just going to make some basic cuts. I'm going to make a straight cut through the board and I'll make a curved cut. And I'll show you some information about each of those and what it looks like. Now, the first thing I do when I get to the bandsaw is I'm going to take the guide post locking lever and the guide post adjust handle and I'm going to lower the guard or guide down here so that it's about a quarter inch or less above the piece of wood. What am I doing? I'm trying to get it close enough that I can't put my finger in there. So on a test we might say a quarter inch or less but essentially what I'm doing is making this space between the guard and the board small enough that my finger can't fit in it. Right now, before I make my cut, the other thing I want to make sure I've done is gotten my push stick and put it up here on the table to use. Now, I can grab, as I mentioned in the video, I can grab my official looking push stick or I can simply reach over into the trash and get a scrap piece of wood on a bandsaw. Doesn't matter uh, that it's official. I just need something to help me push the board through the blade. Now, the next thing that I need to make sure that I do when using the bandsaw is to keep my fingers two inches away from the blade. We have a two inch safety zone on a bandsaw. That means, generally speaking, the little throat plate. Keep your fingers out of the throat plate area because once you get within the throat plate, you're getting into the two inch safety zone. And as long as you keep your fingers two inches away from the blade, you should have no problems. When I work with a bandsaw, another safety rule is that I don't stand to the side, right? This would be the side. I'm standing to the side of the bandsaw. I should always be standing out here in front of it, or potentially I could be standing back here behind it watching the next person cut, but I never want to stand to the side. Here's the reason why. It, it's, it is said that it's possible if a bandsaw blade, which is a very flexible metal, broke, it could break, it could hit the table, and it could shoot out this side of the saw, right? It, it wouldn't matter if it hit the table and flexed and shot out this side, 
it's going to hit the, tape, the, the saw itself. Nothing here. That is a problem. But if, if the bandsaw blade hit and bent and flexed out this direction, and you were standing right here watching the person doing their cut, you could get hit with the broken blade. So, for that reason, one of the rules of a bandsaw is you never stand and watch what's going on here to the side of the bandsaw. You either have to be out here in front of it or back here behind it. So, let me go ahead and make my first cut. Again, one of my, one of my safety rules for every machine, make sure I have on my safety glasses before I do any cutting. This is not one of the louder machines, although having on ear protection is certainly helpful. It's not one of the louder machines, uh, so it's not a requirement. Once I turn the machine on, I want to make sure the machine has come up to full speed before I introduce the piece of wood into the blade. Now, right at the end, I'm going to use my push device. That helps me get the board through the blade without cutting my finger, right? And you can see the cut is now in the piece of wood, right? That's fine. That's where I want the cut, in the piece of wood, not in my finger. So there is my cut. Now, in this case, I made a straight cut, but I didn't use a fence. It's not a perfect cut, right? If I go like that and put it on there, you'll see a lot of shadows in there. Uh, it's not very straight, but the bandsaw isn't made for cutting perfectly straight pieces of wood. That's what the table saw is used for, right? Now, if I needed a bunch of little sticks like that, I was gonna drive them in the ground or whatever. Perfect, that's perfect for the bandsaw. What the bandsaw really excels at is the freehand cutting of curves. So I'll show you that here next. All right, well, the next cut I want to do is a curved cut. And this is really what the bandsaw allows me to do quite well. Um, I can do two types of curves. I can cut a curve that's an inside curve that's kind of tight, which, is, which means it's kind of small. And I can also do kind of a gentle flowing curve. So I'll cut both of those for you. The first one I want to show you is this one right here. So this is a pretty tight curve for a bandsaw to cut, depending on the size of the blade. To make this cut, I need to use what are called relief cuts. So here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight across like that. I'm going to cut across it, and I'm going to get rid of this up here get that out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of relief cuts. Now the relief cuts are straight cuts where I back out of the, the cut. I'm going to cut in here and I'm going to back out. Cut in here, 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 back out. So those are called relief cuts. And here's how they are going to relieve. As I start to make this curve, every time my blade gets to one of those previously cut relief cuts, the piece of wood I'm working on falls out. And then I make my next cut over to here. That piece of wood falls out. And that relieves the tension on the blade. When a blade is being cut into a curved shape, um, it puts a lot of tension. The, the pieces of wood, the little tiny thin kerf wants to bind and pinch on the blade. Every time the blade touches one of these relief cuts, the little piece of wood being cut pops out of there and, and it relieves the tension, the pinching on the blade. And that's going to, over the course of a big cut like that, that's going to save me from having the blade break or come off of the machine in the midst of a really tight cut.
All right, well, what you see here are my relief cuts. Notice that the relief cuts do not touch the pencil line, right? The relief cuts all stop just short of the pencil line so that I don't change the overall shape of this curve that I want to cut. Now I'm going to go back to the saw and I'm going to attempt to cut out this curve without breaking the blade. Well, there's my curve, and you can see around the, uh, the cut that there's still some wood showing next to the pencil line. And that's important because when I'm done with my cut, generally speaking, it's never very nice. Um, on a real curved cut like this, I'm going to expect to go to my sander and clean this up and sand right to my pencil line. Now you can see here, when I've been cutting on a bandsaw, I end up with lots and lots of little tiny scraps and pieces all over the saw. Another good safety rule when working on a bandsaw is keep your work area clean. I would never want to just continue working on new cuts with all of this scrap all over the table. So between cuts or as I'm cutting, I'm always going to stop and clean out all these scraps. Now, if I'm gonna reach in here and start picking up all these scraps, I wanna make sure I've turned the machine off and stopped it before I lift and pick up all these pieces to throw them out. So now I have another curve that I wanna cut. This curve is much more gentle and I don't need, um, I don't need to use the relief cuts for this one. It's just a very long meandering cut. Here's another rule that we want to follow when cutting curves on a bandsaw. I always push forward and turn gently at the same time. Curve cuts on a bandsaw require forward movement during the cut. I never twist a board, right? I never take a board and go along and then realize, hey, I need to get the cut over here, so I'm just gonna twist the board and make the blade go where I want it. No, I'm not gonna make the board go where I want it. I'm gonna break the blade. What you're seeing me do right here is called freehand cutting. I don't have a fence and I don't have a miter gauge. There's no other tool helping secure the board. The board can freely be moved back and forth, but it's all able to be done safely. So the bandsaw is one of the few machines in the woodshop where freehand cutting is allowed. All right, so let's go ahead and make the curve cut right here uh, on this board so you can see what that looks like. And there's my curved piece.
whenever I'm done with my cut on a bandsaw, remember the first thing I want to do as soon as I'm done with the cut is step on that brake. One of the nice things about bandsaws with brake is a brake is that I can bring them quickly to a stop and eliminate any potential for uh, getting cut. Another great rule for a bandsaw while you're working with it is keep the floor around the bandsaw clear of scraps and debris. What you find as you make relief cuts and little cuts like that on a bandsaw is you're going to end up with lots of little pieces and if you're not careful, if you don't grab them and throw them directly in the trash can, you're going to end up with those little pieces of wood all over the floor at your feet. All it takes is putting your foot on a piece of wood just in the right way and it's going to want to make your ankle turn and you're going to put your hand out to try to catch yourself and stop yourself from falling over. That's the moment where you could put your hand into a bandsaw blade. So, one of the smart things to do is every now and then stop, take a broom, and just clean up the work area around the foot of the saw. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed getting to see all the workings of a bandsaw. Uh, this is a fairly complicated machine and as you saw, uh, the length of the video is a little longer because there are so many parts and pieces that we need to talk about and you need to understand in order to use the bandsaw effectively. So I look forward to seeing you next time when we take another look at one of the other great machines that we have here in the Royal High School Woodshop.